Hello children and welcome to this session today. Children in this wonderful journey with you over so many chapters we finally reached the last chapter and it is the interesting story of wastewater. Chapter 19 Management of Wastewater. In this chapter we are going to learn about wastewater and sewage, significance of drainage and sanitation, the sewage system, the treatment of sewage and alternate methods of sewage disposal. We all understand that a lot of waste is produced in our houses. But do we realize the amount of waste that goes down the drain pipe? Do you understand whether this waste that is going down the drain pipe is going to block the drains anywhere or not? So these are the, some of the questions that are going to be tackled in this chapter. First of all, let us understand about wastewater and sewage. So we know that waste, that water is an indispensable component of our everyday life. Now when we are going to use water for cleaning, washing, bathing, everything, what is going to happen? The impurities like human excreta, detergent, dirt, leftover materials of food like remains of vegetables, even wash over of vegetables and fruits and sometimes also the oil. Where is all this going to go? This is going to go down the drain pipe. Now out of all these, there were some in organic impurities. Now these organic impurities like vegetable peels, what do they do? They encourage the growth of microorganisms. Now because of these, if the sewage water is allowed to stand anywhere, they will begin to contaminate the drinking water sources and lead to diseases like jaundice, dysentery, typhoid, cholera and gastroenteritis. Apart from household waste, now waste water is also produced from industries. It is also produced from agricultural sources. So all this water before it is allowed to mix with the rivers or lakes, it has to be treated to avoid any kind of waterborne diseases or infectious diseases or even the mixing of harmful chemicals that are released from things like detergent and many chemicals that are released from the industries. Also in agriculture we use so many fertilizers and your manures which also release a host of chemicals into the water. So what is sewage? Sewage is basically cleaning this water from homes and factories into a usable form. Now there are many contaminants as we have already talked about. So what are these contaminants? The organic and inorganic components that add to make the water impure are known as contaminants. Now if a city has got a good drainage and sanitation system, then the city is definitely going to be able to treat its wastewater wisely. Otherwise, if it is untreated, again the same thing, this can lead to cholera and dysentery. So here what is happening? One, this untreated sewage water is lying on the roads. Two, if this unsewage water mixes with drinking water sources, rivers, lakes, etc., then the water sources are getting contaminated for a lifetime. It will be so difficult. We have heard of Ganga Action Plan. We've heard of Narmada cleaning the cleaning of Yamuna, but we all know how difficult it is and how much money and manpower it requires. This essentially brings forth the requirement of sewage system in our houses. First step to a good neighborhood is good sewage and cleanliness within the neighborhood. So here we can see in this picture that we can see a property line. This property line actually defines the area that is covered by this house. There are clean out drain pipes that we can see and there is a sewer lateral. All the waste that comes out of our house goes to the manhole. Now this manhole running under the street is a public sewer system that runs to the sanitation department of the city or the town. So when this goes to the public sewer system, the treatment of sewage has to be done. Now let us understand the different stages of sewage treatment through this video.
Pollutants are contaminants that are removed from sewage in a sewage treatment plant or the wastewater treatment plant. Sewage treatment consists of three treatment stages. The primary treatment requires the sewage that enters the sewage treatment plant to pass through bar screens. This removes large objects like rags, sticks, cans, plastics, etc. Then the sewage is made to flow through a grit and sand removal tank. Sand, grit and pebbles settle down. The sewage is then passed into a primary sedimentation tank and allowed to stand for 10 to 12 hours. Most suspended solids settle down in the form of primary sludge. This sludge is removed from the sedimentation tank with the help of scraper and shifted in large closed tank. The organic matter present in the sludge is decomposed by anaerobic bacteria to produce biogas. Sludge is taken out and dried and is used as manure. So here we see how all these steps of screening, settling and aeration help in bringing out clean water. Now the water that comes out of the sewage treatment plant is mostly reused for agriculture. It is also used for watering the parks and the plants that you see on streets. And there are some of the alternate methods of sewage disposal also. The first one is use of a septic tank. In a septic tank, a deep pit is dug in the ground in which the sludge is anaerobically broken down by bacteria. The second way is using a biodigester, which is much like a septic tank in which the bio waste is broken down to methane and carbon dioxide. This methane gas is stored as a fuel called as biogas. So children in this chapter we have essentially learned how waste can be converted into useful things. We have learned what sewage and sludge means and we have also learned the causes and implications in case sewage is not treated. So I am sure you are going to be aware citizens, you are not going to put oil or plastics in your drains, you are going to make sure that there are treatment plants working very well in your vicinity. Thank you so much for joining us.